In our final learning objective, we're going to look at some special cases of discounted cash flow analysis. Uh, how do I look at cost-cutting equipment? Do I look at it the same way as a major capital investment? How about a bid when I put in a bid for a roadway project? What kind of analysis should I do? And finally, um, when I look at uh, two different types of equipment with different lives and different maintenance costs, but they perform the same essential function, uh, again, how do I analyze this sort of major capital investment um, project? Uh, so we'll go over these three real quickly. So when I'm evaluating cost-cutting proposals, I install a piece of equipment that will cut costs. I still do the same type of analysis, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, and calculate OCF. I don't vary for any of these uh, projects. So if I install a piece of equipment that's, uh, let's say, a $200,000 piece of computer equipment, inventory management that's going to manage my inventory more effectively, I still want to do uh, this analysis where I will do an income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow, even though the sales will be zero in this case. Uh, here's an example to buy or not to buy. $200,000 piece of equipment that will manage our inventory better, depreciate straight line to zero, four-year life, uh, worth $30,000 at the end of the uh, four-year period. So I can sell it for, if it's fully depreciated to zero, I can sell it and I'll have to pay tax on the gain. System will save us $60,000 before taxes each year because it's managing inventory more carefully and effectively. Tax rate of 39% and uh, will cost $45,000 in networking capital to start this project. What's the MPV at 16% and what's the uh, internal rate of return on this investment? So what do I do? Same thing we've always done, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. Sales are zero, cost are $60,000, depreciation, uh, straight line to zero is $50,000, so I get it. Uh, and again, watch your sign because costs are negative. So I'm reducing costs, so it's minus and minus on the cost line. And I take minus and minus 60, uh, minus 50, and I get an EBIT of $10,000. Uh, taxes in this case at 39% will be $3,900, and I'll have a resulting MPAT of $6,100. I can quickly do an OCF uh, bottom up because there's no interest expense, and it looks like the uh, bottom up. Um, cash flow OCF will be uh, $56,100 each year. Again, that'll come in for four years. Uh, after tax salvage value, again, I, I want after tax cash flow. So if that $30,000 gain I'm going to make by selling this computer equipment, I have to pay $11,700 in taxes at, at the 39% tax rate on this one. So that will reduce my cash flow. And um, uh, $30,000 minus the $11,700 will give me an after-tax salvage value of $18,300. That will be a positive cash flow in year four. So I'm not going to get the $30,000 and I'm going to get $11,700 less because of taxes. I'll get $18,300 goes in as my cash flow in year number four. So I lay this out again, OCF minus NCS minus CNWC to calculate the overall cash flow from assets. So uh, this uh, piece of equipment costs $200,000 uh, today, but I will save $45,000 in networking capital due to more efficient inventory management. So my net cash outflow in uh, time zero is negative $155,000. For that, I'll get 56-1, 56-1, 56-1, 56-1, 56-1 in each year in uh, operating cash flow. Uh, in the fourth year, I have to turn that sign around and change my networking capital to a negative $45,000 and uh, the after-tax cash flow on the uh, sale of the equipment in year four, I'll get 18300 in. And so I calculate my uh, cash inflows. I compare them and discount them uh, after discounting them to the cash outflow of negative 155000 And my MPV at 16% uh, is negative 12768 So I'm going to reject this project on that basis at that, uh, at that hurdle rate uh, of 16%. Um, so after some trial and error, um, we have an IRR of about 11.5%. So this one is nowhere near the hurdle rate of the company, so the CFO will reject this one. Uh, case number two, special case number two, is when I have a bid price. I'm setting a bid price. Let's say you are a local road builder um, and you have to submit competitive bids for a stretch of highway. It's very important to your business. A lot of times the winner is the one who submits the lowest bid, but you may get into the bidder's curse where you just keep bidding so low and so low and so low on every bid where you run yourself right out of business. So again, how should I evaluate this project? I should do the same thing. Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow on any new project or any new startup um, and avoid that bidder's curse. The final uh, special project you're going to use are uh, 
projects where you might have similar functions needed with different costs of the uh, project. Uh, one may be more expensive, but it has less maintenance cost per year. Um, and in this case, in this case, we must calculate the equivalent annual cost of these. And we have an example in here uh, of a filtration system that a chemical manufacturer might buy or a precipitation system. Both have the same function, but two different methods of pollution control. One costs 1.1 million, the other one costs 1.9 million um, to install, buy and install. $60,000 a year for the filtration system and replace it every five years, so that only has a five-year useful life, whereas the precip system will cost only 10000 but it's more expensive, but only 10000 a year to operate and will last eight years. So these have differing lives and different maintenance costs. Uh, which one is better at a 12% discount rate? Tax rate of your company is 34%. So what do I do in this case with the filtration system or the precipitation system? I can't pay for both of them. I can only do one or the other. I need to calculate the equivalent annual cost. How do you do that? Income statement, balance sheet, cash flow. Sales in both cases are zero, minus the cost to operate. And then I subtract depreciation on both of these straight line over the useful life, whether it be five years or eight years and create an income statement, a balance sheet, and cash flow, and then uh, calculate the OCF. Uh, after I calculate the OCF, I look at an annuity factor, and um, I calculate total present value of the cost, and then I calculate the equivalent annual cost. So the filtration system um, is equal to a negative uh, 973,000 is equal to some EAC each year times the uh, present value annuity factor of 3.6048. So the equivalent annual cost of the filtration system is 269, almost 270,000. Precipitation system, I take the same thing. I take the uh, MPV and that's equal to some equivalent annual cost times the annuity factor, differing annuity factor, and I get an EAC of negative $308,000 and I look at on an equivalent annual basis which of these two systems is better, and we find that the filtration system is uh, the cheaper of the two on an equivalent annual basis when we're comparing apples to apples, taking into account the uh, differing useful lives and the different maintenance cost of each. In summary, uh, we, you should be able to, at this point, know how to calculate project cash flows and how to make effective decisions on large capital investment projects. Uh, you should look at incremental cash flows, after-tax cash flows, and relevant cash flows for the project and, and ask the question, do they add value to the company? Uh, third, we looked at the three key pro forma financial statements that you need to use whenever you're developing any sort of project. It might be a bakery in Brooklyn. It might be uh, putting installing a new inventory management system, which has no sales. We're still going to build an income statement, a balance sheet, and a cash flow when evaluating these major projects. Uh, we looked at three new definitions of OCF. Um, so whenever I'm calculating OCF, I know I need to build an income statement vertically and don't stop till you get to net income because if I get to net income and there's no interest expense, Hence, I can do the bottom-up approach very quickly and calculate OCF. And finally, what are uh, three special cases of DCF analysis? Um, again, cost-cutting proposals, um, looking at uh, uh, developing bids, and then finally looking at two different types of equipment with uh, dissimilar lives and dissimilar maintenance costs. How do I analyze those sorts of projects? Uh, I hope you've enjoyed session number 10 of Introduction to Finance.